I've mentioned two names already. First of all, I would like Jacob on stage with me. Come on, um, you're the co-founder of The Venture, and today you're going to actually launch with Max. You can introduce Max in a second. Right. And you're going to launch the Austrian Airlines bot and European's first jackpot accelerator. Correct. Um, so who are you? You've been like, okay, if you, if you meet uh, Jacob, I think the first word he mentions is bot, like it's something in his, like it's bot, bot, it's like in your brain. His t-shirt says, my, okay, my his, bot is not um, his bot is not <laughs> stupid. So like um, you can see like he lives and breathes the topic and he's been, he's also the, um, you're the creator of the bot spot Vienna community, aren't you? Yes. With David together, we're curating the BotSpot uh, Vienna community. All right, okay, so that's better. Yeah. So with David together from Horatio, we are both curating the BotSpot Vienna community, and we launched the weekly meetup, and now everyone's contributing to that open community. Uh, Horatio is contributing to the conference here, and we are launching the, the yes. accelerator as, as part of this uh, yeah. common endeavor. Yeah. So what else is there to say to you? You're like, you're to like you I'm a nerd. You're an, okay, that's like, <laughs> and the thing is so, okay, we're actually gonna make Jacob happy for a second because I know he's been working so hard to make, to launch this thing today. Like he's been, I think you've had dreaming about Austrian Airlines, I guess, constantly. in the air. Because really if, constantly. if you think about like this bot is for like 10 million people are gonna use it, something Austrian like that? Airlines has like 10 million users like every year, passengers, so yeah. like, the potential is quite big. Yeah, yeah, so you can see like it was a big, big project. And I know what Jacob really loves. He loves posting stuff on Facebook. He loves <laughs> also like a lot of bot stuff. So if you're on, on his live stream, you can like see a lot of bot stuff. And he loves selfies. So I'm not a big selfie person, but what, what we're going to do with him right now, we're going to turn around. Max, you can also join. Talk. We're going to, what Maggie did in the morning, like what, right. what, what is a nerd selfie? Like, is there one like a nerd? I don't know. Just do a selfie. That's just fine. Do a, okay. <laughs> so it's like, like, like a bot. Just, just tell me. A bot selfie. Okay. Right? Bot, so a bot selfie. So right. how you do that? Do you like just turn it around? Okay, and what do, the, what, what do the people that have to do something? Yeah. So, like, so like, everyone makes a bot face? What's a bot face? Okay, what is a bot? Is it like a duck face? No? A bot face. Okay, everyone makes a bot face and we'll look up each face and we'll try to figure out what's a good bot face, okay, right? Okay, okay. okay. okay one, you press okay, the button. One, two, two three, three, go! go! <laughs> I love your bot faces. I, I didn't one, see a lot of answers. We'll see. But I love, love sm him smiling again because in the morning I was like, <sighs> okay, <laughs> let's launch it. So Jacob, welcome on stage. I'm happy to hear more about also about the, actually the challenges and the good things which were in the process because it's really important not only when you talk about jackpots, how uh, awesome they are and about the possibilities. Yes, they are there, but it's also a difficult journey. And I think it's really important to also really talk about them, how this journey actually, how much energy it takes, how I guess it takes like <laughs> needs great partners and people it needs involved. Incredible and partners, yeah. Yes, and that's what you're going to hear in the next um, slot. So I think you're going to introduce Max. Enjoy, and you're going to actually get this microphone. Okay. So we're gonna do cool. That. So this Max. works, Max. So as I said, thanks for the intro. Ooh, I'm gonna, like, getting suspense. full cabled. Awesome. Yes. I'm gonna go. Yeah, sure. Talk. Just talk. So um, thanks all for coming. Um, as Steph already said, my name is Jacob, and I welcome on stage. Uh, a really dear partner of ours, uh, through has been like an incredible partner throughout this journey, developing a bot and representative for our partner ambassador. Uh, ambassador, am I always speaking that wrong? Okay, whatever. Is Max? He's a senior consultant with Ambassador, working closely with Austrian Airlines. And I also like to welcome all the people from Austrian Airlines who are in this room, because uh, it's always incredible when like big corporates actually do this innovative step, work with young companies, work with young innovators. So like, first of all, give a big applause to all the Austrian people and all the people in this project, because I think that's a really incredible. <laughs> right, so the way we're gonna structure it is, Max is gonna talk a little bit about the project, what we did, where we're coming from, and then I'm diving into the nerd stuff. I'm going to dive into the technical stuff, what we find out, what we discovered. So Max, stage is yours. Push okay, it. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, first things first, um, this is an early stage product. We just launched this morning. So be patient when you test it later. Um, I want to give you a quick review on the roadmap we had. Um, we developed the whole project until the, the status you can see today within three months. So we started with the first pitch in the middle of July and then we went right through into the conception phase. We developed like a 
pre-MVP, um, which we, we did user tests at the airport in Vienna. And um, from there, it's today our launch, this morning. Um, we had some challenges to tackle or some things that we had to discuss uh, in the first place. Um, we had a decision to make whether we want to create a, an avatar or something like that, a whole bot personality, or whether we want to give um, Austrian Airlines a voice. And we had some discussions on that, and in the end it came, came to the conclusion that it makes sense that a strong brand like Austrian Airlines it is, and, um, which is a unique brand, um, we wanted to, to bring the core values of Austrian Airlines to life through a conversational interface with our bot. And yeah, it's, it's a pretty um, emotional situation now because you'll be the first persons, within the first persons to see the bot now. And yeah, here we go. So this is the My Austrian Messenger service. Um, I tried to pick out some, some decisions we made through the process, which could be interesting for you. Um, on, the, on the start page, uh, we decided that there's only a little information and not too much information about this is a bot, because usually the user is used to talk to a service agent within Austrian Airlines. Um, that's why we decided to keep the information little and make it as easy as possible for the user to start and get connected with the bot. Um, within the welcome process, we also decided to use a half-structured um, half case where we have buttons and the user can get a broad overview of what he can do with the bot. So he has a success case uh, of 100% on this page and he's not getting into the conversation and putting large text into it and stuff. So he'll, he'll fail within the first minute. That's why we decided to go for the buttons. Um, I picked out some, some modules of the bot to talk about them. Um, I think that's my favorite module, actually, the inspiration module. Um, it's connected to the My Austrian WordPress blog, um, where we get the information from. And the user can ask, for example, if that he's searching for a holiday at the beach or something like that. And you'll get content not only for one destination or something, but a whole lot of um, blog, uh, blog articles which we collected within the last five years. I don't think I have to say much about the flight search module. Everyone can imagine what you can do there. But um, we just decided this week that we'll go for a date picker um, because we, we had a, a more successful, successful rate in, in the users when they, when they came up by picking the date because it was a bit of problem to, um, to get the date format right. Cool. And the small talk module. Um, I don't want to talk about it too much because the best thing is if you try it on your own. We have also some Easter eggs um, within the bot. So yeah, try it out. And now uh, Jacob is, is going to talk about the technical details of the bot. Cool. Thanks. I, I need this one. This you can have. Right. OK. <laughs> cool. So how does the tech Thanks, Max. <laughs> so like doing doing. Okay, doing the technical part for like a bot this size, you need to like really consider a lot of the usual stuff you do in software development, right? So if you have a broad overview of how the system works, right? You have obviously um, an API where you get the request from Facebook, 
And then you have like a lot of components, like natural language processing, a lot of APIs. So this thing is really an API junkie. All the APIs we can get, we try to use, right? And then there is a problem-solving module for like everything that is not modeled that kind of falls through the usual process. You kind of are going into this like knowledge information retrieval process, basically, that is in the bot. So all of that has to be defined. And when we set up the initial structure, we immediately realized MVC doesn't cut it. So everyone who ever works with with software development knows that MV, MVC is kind of like the semi gold standard. Like you have a model, you have a view, you have a controller. So this is like your standard approach. But with a bot, there are no controllers, there are no actions, there are hardly any views. You have one view, that's the interface to the customer, right? So the classical concept kind of fails. So we had to develop something that works with us, works with the way that messaging works. And what we developed is a lifecycle model, right? So we're not having different controllers or views, but we're having one de defined lifecycle that every message passes through. So the message is here emitted at Facebook. We went through an enhanced face where we basically correct the speech of the user, where we basically enhance it, where we convert emojis to text, emojis to information, where we extract payload informations, right? So after enhancement, we go to understanding. We try to understand the intent. We try to understand what the user wants to talk about, which entities are in there, right? And then this information from the understanding part is switched to the knowledge part. In the knowledge part, we try to like give the information more additional information. Like for example, we, we got from the understanding you're asking for a PNR for a, person's, a passenger name record. And in the knowledge part, we say, do we have for that user any PNRs already in our long-term memory? Right? And then we enhance the message with those kind of informations. So at the end of this first three parts of the life cycle, I end up with a huge object of like all the additional information, first enhanced, then understood, classified, and then actually increase the knowledge of the actual message. And then you are in the decide part. And the decide part is interesting because I take everything that I have in this huge object and I say like, okay, based on all of that, what do I do with it, right? Do I do a text message with some quick replies? Do I output a carousel? Do I output an emoji? Do I give back a text? What is it, right? And then whatever the decide module then decides goes out to Facebook. And this lifecycle model actually opens up an entire new way for us to work with those messages. Because we can have multiple inputs, right? We can have a text input that's converted to a text in understanding, goes to knowledge, and then a date picker goes out, right? Because the decide module decides the best way to display this kind of information is a date picker. Uh, I can start with an emoji that's then converted to a text and then runs through the entire life cycle, right? I can work with a payload and the payload is going through and at the end, the decide model and basically decides a good way to represent that payload is a text, right? So this gives you a lot of freedom how you basically routing the message through the life cycle and you have like defined breaking points, like defined interfaces between those lifecycle modules that actually allow you to route the message through the lifecycle and, and give you basically the output that you want. That's a very smart way, we think, because the classical MVC doesn't work, but this works really well for messages. One more interesting thing, a bot has to remember stuff, right? That's, that's the interesting part of the bot. If you're just writing and you're always starting with a fresh context, Rather boring conversation. But the moment the bot remembers, all right, I inputted already a passenger name record, and two minutes later you ask for a passenger name record, I can already give you the passenger name record as a quick reply because I know it's already in the memory. So how do we design the memory? Basically, it's a stupid, simple table, right? We have a user, and then we say, like, this is a passenger name record, this is a value, and it's valid until. And basically what we do is we have an alpha curve. So the bot over time forgets values, like an actual brain would do, right? So basically, a PNR that's entered now and is valid now is always the first one to show up in a quick reply. But after like a year or two months, depending on the, on the valid date, it increases the informational value and you see it less often or you maybe skip it entirely in the forget phase, right? So 
There are a lot more challenges to it, but I think those two are the interesting ones that we want to pick out for this talk. And so if you're ready to bot, um, the Austrian Airlines uh, messaging service is online as of speaking. So basically, you can check it out. Please be patient. It's an early prototype, as I, as I already said. And you all know the capa capacities of natural language processing and all of that. So this is one project we are really, really happy to present to you. There's one more thing, um, and that's the second announcement we want to do. As a company, as the Venturi, we are really fortunate to work with major players, but we've also been working with a lot of really cool startups in the last couple of years, right? So what we're going to do is we make one more announcement because we think it's super important for the BotSpot Vienna, and it's super interesting also for you as a developers or startups w within Europe, basically. We are basically announcing Europe's first chatbot accelerator that basically starts today. So basically, you can already sign up for the accelerator for the actual discovery phase. The actual accelerator will start uh, early next year, probably January, February next year. It's going to be uh, a six-month program. And what we are really, really happy about is that we do acceleration through execution. We're not the usual accelerator that throws money at you and like a canvas and expect you to grow. We believe in a strategy where we basically go in like, so here's an expert that has already done that on a massive scale. This one is going to work for you the next couple of months with you coding actual features. So we believe in an actual acceleration through execution. So no bullshit, no talking, execution. And I think this is really, really important for especially an ecosystem like Europe, where we actually have to get the product out, have to code features. So I'm really thrilled about that uh, concept, actually. So what we're going to do, dedicated marketing resources, the entire the venture company is all about marketing, growth hacking, data analysis, about actual programming. So I think this is a great service that we offer. And Christoph, Christoph, can you say hi? Christoph is, is outside, actually. And if you want to talk about <clears throat> the accelerator and all of this, he's happy with me to answer all the questions. As I said, it's going to be like a six-month program. So we really want to take our time, really push the company, make a sustainable growth for the company. We have already been founders ourselves. So this is like designed how we want our own accelerator to be, basically. And the idea is to get you from a prototype to a product market fit, right? So really have like a bot, you have like something to show, some early ideas. Show them that's the stuff we're interested in. We want to bring you to market, and we want to give you the guidance that you need to push something that big out into the market. Right, as I said, application starts December. First batch, probably February 2014. We have already some amazing um, partners that we partner with. There are a lot more coming. Uh, a lot haven't finished all our LOEs yet. Microsoft's on board, Selma Podanovic as a VC, and um, uh, also like Business Angel is on board, Ambassador, our trusted partner, are on board, and a lot more. We offer legal services and more and more and more and more, um, all of that in one package. So yeah, with that two really nice announcements, I'll let you try out the bot. And if you have any questions regarding Austrian Airlines or the uh, accelerator, please feel free to approach me and that's have, it. We you want to sign up, come to me. Right. Okay. You want to sign up, come to Crystal. Right. So much excitement in such it a is. short it time. Is. Awesome. Great. But is there a question out there? Are there oh, yes. That was a quick one. That, that was a quick one. That was a quick one. You're going to get that. Thank you. Uh, might you explain what languages and frameworks you chose and why? OK. So basically, from a technical perspective, it runs on Node.js. So it's a classical Node.js. We are, if you want to really know all about it, it's a SQLizer JS for like the database connection and stuff like that. There's no real framework behind it. So there's no like ready-made uh, GitHub or whatever project that we copied and started from. We basically started from scratch because we had the feeling that for, for a project this size, there wasn't any framework available that we can fully trust on. And we also wanted to try our own approach. Um, the framework we developed now, like our internal framework, is going to go through a couple of more customers, and then we'll see what we do with it. Either we open source it, and because we can actually like open source like a good chunk of like how the structure and everything works, um, but we'll see. We haven't decided yet. We'll we'll look into it. Maybe like a good framework comes up, and we're happy to adapt it. 
for now, this is handmade and it's working amazingly well. Cool. Right. Okay. We actually okay. We have two more minutes, so if it's a quick question, we can still um, so shout it out. Mini mini mo. Okay. Do you do one. handover? Yes, absolutely. Handover is a very, very critical part. So like, as you know, a bot fails, happens, right? So what we do is basically the moment we detect in the life cycle that this is not going to go well, we immediately go on a route that says, OK, I'm a bot. Um, I'm not doing this like perfectly fine. I'll give you two options. Try again or inform an agent. So the incredible guys from Austrian Airlines have an amazing staff that does the, the general service. So the moment the bot fails, we'll hand over a ticket to them, and the bot gets silent. So the bot is not actually responding to it, so we're open the same channel to the customer agent. right? The customer agent solves the case, notifies the bot, and then the bot starts again with a conversation. So this is a really smart handover way. It's, from a technical perspective, really, really tricky because you have to like coordinate all those subsystems. Um, but it works incredibly well. We are having go really good responses with that. Yes. OK, I heard interesting, so I think it, it answered. OK, actually, before we're going to dock on the laptop, Peter's laptop right now. Cool. So that means we have one more time one more, for one more right? question. There is so much. That you had, I think there was one, one arm, like, I think I'm going to, I'm sorry. I, you were really sorry? quick before, and I like, you have um, a lot of strength in your arms. So you said it's like an early stage, right. not really a prototype, but how does Austrian deal with having a, like an early stage pro in production with booking flights? Right. Or so, there's, so first of all, there's no booking flights. So all of it is informational, so you don't have that kind of decisions to face. It's a very bold move, and it's very bold from Austrian Airlines to go into this innovation phase. But as we are continuously improving the service, this is a starting point, right? And at one point, you have to have the confidence to say, like, this is, this is enough. We're going to go out with it. And then we continue over the next couple of years and next couple of weeks, basically, in how we developed it. So I think it's very bold, and I, I really appreciate the choice Austrian Airlines did here. Um, but I am very confident that we deliver a good enough service to actually be customer facing. Yeah. yeah. So now we can learn okay. the bot can learn. Exactly. That's always a thing, right? A bot can always learn with the interactions. And if you design a bot, you have like those 20 showcases and you're like, this is all gonna happen. And then it comes the user and you're like, oh no, no, wait, there are a million more questions the user has. So it's at a certain point really important to go into market to discover those questions so you can learn from there on. Cool. I think you answered cool. a fair amount of questions and gave so. us a fair amount of information. If there are more <laughs> questions, please approach me. Yeah. I'm, I'm so here all day. So. so you can see Jacob loves answering questions. He's you're actually a human chatbot, I would say. Yeah, you're I like <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, thank you um, for the both of you for giving us an insight and launching it live here at. Um, the chatbot conference, chatbot conference yeah. makes that's totally what we do. sense. That's what we do. And um, thanks for being here. And we're going to move on to the next talk. Good. Big Thank round of you. applause, please. Thank you.